I'm in Paris at a football match with a difference. It happens every day and helping organise it is an African soccer hero, former Cameroon World Cup star Emmanuel Mabouang Cossack, who divides his time between France and Cameroon. He's still got it, man. He's still got it. I, I'm still buzzing over the fact that Emmanuel was playing in 1990 when I was watching England against Cameroon in the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> the players are some of Africa's best young talent, but they rely on a charity founded by Emmanuel for these training sessions because they're living here illegally. Many are victims of football agents who've cheated them with false promises of a place with a European team. Some estimates reckon 15,000 African footballers are now stranded across Europe. Everyone have a story here. Some, they don't have where to sleep. He will, he just arrive, he say, okay, come and sleep with me. That is better here than to sleep in the metro. I was speaking to Manuel earlier, and, and he said, you know, if he went back to Cameroon and he spoke to the boys there and he said to them, Paris is freezing cold. You won't have anywhere to live. There's no food over here. Those guys would still come regardless. They would still take that chance, you know, just because they want to live out their dream and become a professional footballer. They may be in Europe, but without the right visas, clubs can't sign them. Like most of the players at the game, 25-year-old Rushden Jonte comes from Cameroon. He played there as a striker for the Matalo team. This is the tiny room he shares with another African footballer. He told me an agent had taken him for trials in Europe and Russia in exchange for $6,000. But there were no trials. Once they were out of Cameroon, the agent disappeared with the cash. Too ashamed to go home, his dream of a career in football is slipping away. I'm almost dead. Because the system, as we say, the system is vicious. Voilà quoi. C'est comme on disait, même si tu es bon joueur et que tu n'as pas la carte d'identité, tu peux pas jouer même si tu joues comme on a dit. I want to investigate how it can be that so many talented players are being tricked in this way. I'm going to Cameroon, Rustang's home country in West Africa. It's one of the poorest and most corrupt places on earth. But this country of 20 million people has won the African Cup of Nations four times. I'm in the capital, Yaoundé, and I can see why even football-mad Africans think Cameroon's passion for soccer is off the scale. Everywhere I go in Cameroon, I see academies like this one. I mean, there are literally hundreds of them here in Yaoundé, and all of them are filled with young guys like this who are absolutely desperate to become professional footballers in Europe. Anyone can set up an academy to train young footballers. They're big business, and this is one of the best of them. It's just gone 8 a.m. and I'm at the Canon training ground and this is the training ground of the most famous football team in Cameroon. And when I look around, this place is like a dust pole. Look at the pitch. It's about 16 degrees, maybe a little bit hotter. And these guys have been going at it for the last two hours. Emmanuel's also here, fresh from helping the players stranded in Paris. He's one of the coaches at Canon, which is his old club. The best players earn just $100 a month, which is why, despite Emmanuel's warnings, they keep leaving for what they believe are big money deals in a growing list of countries. Turkey, Romania, Russia, uh, uh, Algeria, Morocco. You see, last year I was the coach here. 35 players, I lose, I keep only four. Some of these deals are genuine, but many aren't. Emmanuel says that a vast industry has sprung up in Cameroon, using football to trick and traffic talented youngsters. There, there, there is agent without any, um, any, any license. They just go to the family, I can take you. If you give me $5,000, uh, $5, then your son will go to England. 
to Manchester. The father don't know. He make all the paper, and then the boys go, arrive in uh, Europe. No, and nobody. And I never see the boy anymore. Finish. Emmanuel takes me to meet 19-year-old Abdul Karim, a goalkeeper with the Tournier Club in the capital. Last year, Abdel's agent told him he had a contract to play in Miami in the US. His whole family saw him off as he boarded the flight with his agent and other players. After a few hours, the flight made a scheduled stop in Ethiopia. At the airport, when we arrived, we were descended from the vol. À la salle d'attente, il nous a fait demander d'attendre. Le monsieur, il est parti, il fallait qu'il nous cherche à manger. Il fallait aussi qu'il apprenne quelque chose et qu'il nous a fait comprendre. Moi, je... And with that, the agent disappeared. Et puis, la police m'amène directement en cellule. On n'a pas eu besoin d'enquête de moi. Où je savais juste que je venais du Cameroun et j'étais comme un voleur. On m'a traité de bandit et tout. Oh. After two days, he and the other players were sent back to Cameroon. Abdel's family had paid the agent 4,000 US dollars, their lifetime savings. Abdel, if you could meet that man who defrauded you and your family, what would you say to him? Je ne sais pas, c'est pas pardonner. Je n'aime pas garder rancune. Seul Dieu sait ce que j'aurais si je vois ce monsieur, si je le rencontre. Stay strong. Eh? Abdel is still ashamed at what it's done to his family. That really hit me right here, man. I could still see the pain in Abdel's eyes. I, I just feel so bad for him. And what is just so amazing to think is that he's like any other kid in the world. He started off with a dream, and someone took advantage of that dream and ended up leaving him stranded in prison in the middle of nowhere. I mean, that is just too high a price to pay. I just can't believe it. Soon I'm in touch with dozens of professional players with similar stories. None of them have gone to the police. Cameroon's legal system has big problems with corruption. Money talks and the con men have plenty of it. I meet up with Gilbert Atuge, once a striker with the Sintra Club here in Yaoundé, and his mother Katrine. An agent told Gilbert he'd fixed the trial in Qatar, but when Gilbert arrived, nothing had been arranged. You guys when they come, they give you such a, you know, an impression that everything is possible, everything is going to work out. They look very trustworthy, but in the final analysis, they're all crooks. Did you pay him any money? Yeah, I paid him. I paid him for, for all these transactions. I paid him more than $10,000. 10,000 US dollars? Yes, I think. Yeah, more than 10,000 US dollars. How did you get that money? We did the uh, family contribution. There was family contribution. There was con family contribution because all of us were working. So all of us put our hands on deck and we contributed the money. I would have wanted justice. Why didn't you go and pursue this guy? It's just to move on, forget about the, the past and move on. What would you like to happen to this man? Nothing, nothing. It's only God who has the final say. Gilbert's story is a really powerful one, but the truth is it's something that's repeated thousands of times over, all over Cameroon, all over Africa, in fact. Back at Canon's training ground, I spot Sylvester Etienne. He's an agent looking for talented players he can represent. He boasts he brokers them transfer deals, which means both he and Canon make a commission. So, what's your long distance? What's your long distance? Yeah, let's pass. He insists that he's honest and that he recently got two of his players' contracts with Eastern European clubs. Now he wants to represent Batsy Bruno, a Canon player who used to play at a big Spanish club, Villarreal. So you're going to take Batsy to Romania? 
Yes, first division club. I'm still waiting. We are still, still talking with the club. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe I think uh, next week possible to get some more. Sir. Yes. How, how many players have you got? How many players have you signed? Signed uh, more than 35. More, yes, than... more than 35. And how many of In them? all my career. And how many of them will you be able to get a contract in, in Europe? Now, right now, uh, that's too much, maybe 20. All the players, they would like to work with me because of my, uh, my good job, I don't know why. <laughs> but later, Bruno takes me aside and claims that Sylvester isn't what he seems. Hablo solo para mí. Y puede ser mi situación puede servir a otro jugador, pero para mí el jugador el representante de la mañana he querido trabajar con él, pero para mí me ha ido muy mal porque siempre me dice que vas a viajar, tengo un club para ti, pero nunca he visto este club. Sí, Silvestre. No sé si ahora es un buen representante, pero lo que puede decir es que tengo cuidado con este representante. However, Sylvester seems determined to prove that he's the real deal. He says he's got a player about to head for a trial with Georgian club Dinamo Batumi. If it's successful, he'll play for them. I go to watch the player Sylvester's talking about. He's 17-year-old Patrick Barger, who plays for a top amateur team. He's already a Cameroonian youth international. Patrick lives in a tiny room close to the training ground. Okay, so how are you feeling about the trip to Georgia, the fact that you're going to be going? It's a very good feeling, it's not easy to get out of the country, to leave Africa, to change it, it's a bit more, but it's life, it's a guerrier, so I'm going to be able to do it. It's simple. I can compare to Yaya Yaya Toure. Yaya Toure? Yes, very good midfielder. Yaya Toure. He can play defensive. <laughs> Defensive midfielder, attacking midfielder, they can play. Have you packed your bags? Bon, what is it? The plus, I don't know. The plus, no. Will you be getting paid when you go to Georgia? And if you're going to be getting paid, how much is this going to change your life? Bon, sur le plan financier, je sur le plan financier, honnêtement, je ne je ne parle pas trop de ça. Donc c'est Monsieur, Monsieur Sylvestre, qui gère sur le plan financier. The, the first time you get paid or the first time you have money, what's the first thing you buy? Mon premier salaire, bon, un gros cadeau à ma mère. Patrick's come to say goodbye to his mum Agnes, a school teacher in a nearby town. He's anxious. Sylvester comes along as well. And did he play football all the time in the garden? Ah, c'est ce qu'il entend de dire. Yeah. <laughs> his first steps. First steps here. Patrick's father died some years ago. She's full of ambition for her son. In Africa, we know that if you go abroad, something can change in your life. So if he realizes what he is going to do, I will also be proud of it. I ask if they've given Sylvester any money. He says they haven't. They say they have, but don't want to talk about it in front of him. Thank you. I want to ask a little bit about um, the players from Cameroon who end up being stranded. Um, the bad managers take them to other countries and then just leave them and take their money. Does that worry you? Sylvestre m'a dit, non, je ne te décevrai pas, maman. Je fais confiance à Sylvestre, mais il faut qu'il soit aussi sincère. Pour moi, d'abord, c'est une fierté, c'est une reconnaissance que des gens ont tué à moi parce qu'il y a beaucoup de joueurs au Cameroun, beaucoup de joueurs. Je ne suis pas le plus bon du Cameroun. Si vous dites que je suis en train de vous mentir, il y a de bons joueurs, mais Dieu a voulu que ce soit moi. It's really lovely to meet you. Oh, have a kiss. Oh, thank you, thank you. We fixed to meet Patrick and Sylvester at the airport to say goodbye. Meanwhile, Cameroon are playing in the African Cup of Nations and everyone's watching.
tell you, it's really hard to understand how much football means to the people in this continent. And it's only when you're actually here, I mean, Cameroon, just when the African Cup of Nations is on that you really feel the passion. I mean, the people here are loving it. No wonder families like Patrick's look to football to transform their lives, but it makes them vulnerable. The next morning, I set off to meet Patrick and Sylvester, but they don't turn up and Sylvester stops answering his phone. I'm really nervous that despite his denials, Sylvester may be another dodgy agent. We've just been to a bar where we previously arranged to meet Sylvester and he's not there. Now we're going to a road where we think he lives. We dropped him off down here before. I mean, this is ridiculous. This should be, we should be talking about a guy, a young kid about to start his professional career. Instead, it's a search for a dodgy agent. Where is he? Sylvester had always kept his address a secret. We're making progress. Apparently, this is where he lives. Our fixer, Lewis, has just knocked on his door and been told that uh, Sylvester was here a few minutes ago. Now, this lady is going to call him, so all we can do is wait. Hopefully, when he gets here, we can ask him a few questions. Ah, hello, Sylvester. Have to help me down. Sylvester. Sylvester, what's happening? Yeah, You're not well? Yeah. Where have you been for the last couple of days? We didn't see you yesterday. We wanted, we tried to get sick. hold of you. Nervous. No, I'm nervous. Yes, yes. Why are you nervous? What's up? Well, if he's out, uh, uh, I need to go back next Tuesday. What's happened with the visa? I don't know. I don't know. Told me to go back next Tuesday. So let me get this right. Patrick's visa has been denied for his trip to Georgia. Yes, yes, no, no visa because you know we have to take the, the flight to, to, today, tonight, mm. and go to Turkey. So, how did Patrick feel when you told him that his visa didn't come through? Patrick, we did not talk, we did not talk yet. He called me yesterday. You haven't told him? No. He doesn't know? No. So he still, up until now, he still thinks he's going to go to Georgia. I'm pretty nervous. Cannot. Uh, yesterday you called me many times. It was possible for me to talk. Listen, I have a secret. I have many secrets in my business, in my, in my work, in my business. So I cannot start to tell to everybody. Mm -hmm. So when are you going to tell him? Sorry. When are you going to tell Patrick? We go to the embassy directly. What can I tell him? Are you going to... to? Maybe today I can try to tell him, but I'm still checking. You must, you, you have to tell him. The poor guy thinks he's going to Georgia. He's excited, he's packing his bags. His mum thinks he's going to Georgia as well. You have to tell him. I pressure Sylvester to go and tell Patrick the bad news. Il répondait pas au téléphone parce que la nouvelle m'a vraiment accessé. Bon, pas accessé, mais ça me fait trop bizarre. Savoir que je devais aller aujourd'hui, dire au revoir à tout le monde. On me dit que voilà, été décalé pour de, combien de trois jours. C'est mardi maintenant. Ça m'énerve. Donc, c je suis vraiment déçu. Honnêtement, très déçu. Très déçu. Donc, elle me dit la semaine prochaine. Qu'est-ce qu'il me dit pas que va me dire la semaine sur prochaine? Donc, je suis un peu fâché contre lui, mais c'est une grande personne. Comme il dit, je lui fais confiance. Donc, j'espère que. Everything is okay. So now it's just the embassy talking about uh, the break. So I am. It's not okay, okay though. The guy's so. devastated. Look at him. He's... I'm really worried for Patrick and for his mum Agnes, who says she's given a lot of cash to Sylvester. Under FIFA rules, Cameroon's Football Association, FECAFOOT, is in charge of monitoring the transfer market. But there's evidence that implicates at least one official working with the association with cheating and defrauding players. The whistleblower is Kevin King Kazongo. He tells me an official working with the Football Association asked him to recruit players to join the Aspire training scheme 
for elite players in Qatar. What did they have to pay for and what were they supposed to get in return? Okay, the player was paying for a ticket was 700,000 sefer and visa was 1,100,000 sefer, which make 1,800,000 per player. 1,800,000. And they were 13 in numbers. The official pocketed the cash and denied all knowledge. It's a lady that well known, well, well known in the world of football, well, well known, well known. So you wasn't expecting it? Hi. The official was Marlene Mvutu, who'd recently been a candidate for president of the Football Association. When Kevin produced incriminating documents, there was a public outcry and she was jailed. Christopher Ndong, the lawyer who prosecuted Marlene Mvutu, says all that's unusual about her case is that it came to court. He estimates 40% of transfer deals are scams in some way. Some of the football authorities are accomplices because they know very well what it takes, the modalities, the procedure for a player, a talent, somebody who is talented in football, what it takes for him to leave a country and who has to sign the contract, the contract, he must have a manager, he must have a lawyer, he must have people around him to guide him. He has the talents. So you're saying the football authorities in Cameroon are partly to blame? They are partly to blame because they are in the racket. That is where some of the authorities, the football authorities, make fast cash, get rich fast on the backs of these young boys. Cameroon's Football Association say under FIFA's supervision, they're rebuilding the association to make it stronger and more ethical. It's fantastic football offers these talented youngsters the hope of working abroad. There aren't many professions that do. What's bad is the vast army of fraudsters destroying this hope and the way the Cameroonian authorities let it happen. And what's terrible is that internationally, football, a sport with so much money and power, isn't prioritising this as a problem. Even though thousands of cheated players are being stranded across the world. Just before I leave Cameroon, I call on Patrick. His agent, Sylvester, has stopped answering my calls, but Patrick is still hoping his trial in Georgia with Dinamo Batumi is about to happen. There's my room, my room. When we got back to the UK, we contacted Dinamo Batumi in Georgia. They told us they'd never heard of Patrick or of his agent Sylvester. Thanks for watching this classic Unreported World episode. Click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.